This video shows how simple human errors in data calculation or entry can result in potentially catastrophic outcomes. The video is a computer graphics animation of a tail strike and runway overrun occurrence involving an Airbus A340 aircraft taking off from Melbourne Airport on the evening of the 20th of March 2009. The animation was created from information downloaded from the aircraft's black box or flight data recorder. The animation shows the three-dimensional model of the aircraft and displays a subset of relevant information from the cockpit. On the night of the 20th of March 2009, the crew of an Airbus A340 were preparing the aircraft for a scheduled flight from Melbourne, Victoria to Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. The pre-departure preparation included the use of an electronic flight bag laptop computer to calculate the performance parameters, take off reference speeds, and flap and engine settings for the takeoff. That calculation relied on the manual entry into the electronic flight bag laptop computer of several pieces of data, including the aircraft's takeoff weight. The video begins with the aircraft taxiing towards the threshold end of runway 16. The takeoff weight of the aircraft, 361.9 tons, was available from the aircraft's flight management and guidance system. The crew's intention was to take this figure, add a one-ton allowance for last-minute weight changes, and enter that into the electronic flight bag laptop computer. However, the first officer inadvertently entered 262.9 tons instead of the intended 362.9 tons. The incorrect weight and the associated performance parameters were then transcribed into the flight plan. The takeoff roll commences with the aircraft at 3,530 metres from the end of the runway. The crew have set a parameter called flex temperature to 74 degrees. This determines the engine thrust levels that are applied during takeoff when the throttle levers are set to the FLX slash MCT position. The green colouring on the aircraft's wheels is artificial and was included by the animators to show when the aircraft's weight is being carried by its wheels. The green colouring disappears from each wheel set when the aircraft begins to lift off. There is a sensor switch on each landing gear to indicate this. As the takeoff commences and by normal procedure, the pilot flying commands a slight nose down side stick input until the airspeed reaches 100 knots. With 920 metres left to the end of the runway, the aircraft has reached the calculated rotation speed of 149 knots and the pilot flying attempts to lift the nose by pulling back on the side stick. But the aircraft does not respond. At a speed of around 153 knots and with only 670 metres to the end of the runway, the aircraft slowly begins to respond and shortly after, the pilot commands maximum thrust by moving the throttle levers to the takeoff slash go around position. At about the same time, the aircraft's tail strikes the tarmac and drags along and past the end of the runway surface. The aircraft reaches a speed of 161 knots and the landing gear lifts off the ground, approximately 100 metres beyond the end of the runway. The tail continues to drag for another 100 metres or so until the aircraft begins to climb. The flight crew climbed the aircraft to 7,000 feet and circled over Port Phillip Bay while jettisoning fuel to reduce the aircraft's weight. The aircraft returned to Melbourne for an uneventful landing. The ATSB determined that there were two primary factors in the development of this accident. The flight crew did not detect the erroneous takeoff weight that was used for the takeoff performance calculations, and the flight crew did not detect the degraded takeoff performance until very late in the takeoff roll. The incorrect entry of takeoff weight data that resulted in the tail strike and runway overrun of the Airbus A340 aircraft was not a unique event. Similar events continue to occur throughout the world. To stress that further action is still needed, the ATSB issued a safety recommendation to the United States Federal Aviation Administration. It has also issued safety advisory notices to a number of international aviation organisations, highlighting the importance of managing the problem pilots face in deciding whether the parameters calculated for a particular takeoff are appropriate. The animations presented contain a number of limitations that should be kept in mind when viewing. Firstly, the effects of sunlight intensity, 
surface reflectivity and sun glare that were present at the time of the occurrence are difficult to accurately simulate and have not been included. No shadows, dust, fog or other weather conditions that may have affected visibility were included. Finally, no dynamics calculations were incorporated. The animation is solely a visual representation of the sequence of events. The instruments presented in the video include a representation of the primary flight display in the left panel, with airspeed, attitude, altitude, vertical speed and heading shown as scrolling tape scales. The flight mode enunciator is at the top of the primary flight display. Engine parameters and wing flap positions are displayed in the centre panel, and a depiction of the pilot's side stick and engine throttle levers are to the left. Universal coordinated time is displayed above the instruments on the left, and a representation of the distance between the aircraft and the end of the runway is presented on the right. At the date of this occurrence, local time in Melbourne was UTC time plus 11 hours. The ATSB thanks you for viewing this video and for supporting our commitment to improving transport safety.